Hello, AFI Movie Club. I'm Ruben Freed. I was the production designer on A Christmas Story, the 1983 Christmas movie that uh, we all know and love. And uh, this time of year is special for me because um, I get to interact with a lot of people on the basis of loving that movie. And, and uh, that's always a pleasant experience. Oh, oh, oh. We're trundling up the escalator. Higby's department store was a 19th century family owned store that renovated in the 30s and was in downtown Cleveland at the railway terminal, which had a kind of an underground link. And I think in the film you see the sounds and the trundling of that escalator that goes up and deposits you on the main floor. And the idea was for the Parker family to arrive on that floor and be absolutely you know, surrounded by this. And of course, Ralphie viewed it as his chance to really nail his gift. And he was gonna tell the big man, Santa, exactly what he needed. And uh, this was gonna be the way he would be sure of getting it. Young man, hey kid, just where do you think you're going? Going up to see Santa. That's Gene Shepard right there and his wife, Lee Brown. We were in Cleveland because of Higby's department store. They, of course, had no room in the store for something as ambitious as a mountain like this. But what I designed was a block set of boxes that we could travel with, pile up in a, in a very specific order and create this mountain. And there's uh, reports from the actors who were working there saying that they were kind of terrified once they got to the top because it was 30 feet in the air. And they, of course, didn't have the dropped ceiling in the store, which made it possible to get the height. Most department stores that we would have looked at, that we did look at, all had air conditioning, which lowered the ceiling by three or four feet. So we went high with these boxes. The art department was in there dressing with cotton batting and styrofoam, plastic, uh, lots and lots of glitter and a swimming pool slide, which we got from a local swimming pool supply company. And they gave us permission to be building on a Saturday. And I think we shot on a Sunday and wrapped out uh, maybe the next day. It was a great boon for the film to be able to do that. A football? Oh no, what was I doing? Wake up, stupid, wake up, no! <laughs> You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. When I first read the voiceover and understood how the humor of this was playing through the whole thing, it not only made me laugh, but um, it, it inspired me because I, I thought to myself, you know, it's such an opportunity to do something gentle and funny and absurd. And that, that happened to be exactly my, um, my sort of sense of humor. Actually, Gene Shepard said that what I appeared to be doing was drawing a line between Salvador Dali and Norman Rockwell and playing somewhere in the middle. I didn't understand what he meant at first, but I did afterwards very easily. And it was a perfect description of what we were doing. Norman Rockwell figures hugely in this in a tongue in cheek sort of a way. And certainly the absurdity is, is, is all over the place. Ah, fragile. It must be Italian. Well, I think that says fragile, honey. Oh yeah. This scene has generated more ink than <laughs> I can imagine. There's a story about the way this thing is coming in the door. The crate was built a little too large to fit in the stage set doorway. We, we skimped on everything and we had to cut it down. Hence, you get the partial words on the side, uh, his end up instead of this end up. There's Excelsior inside this box, something you may not be too familiar with. Excelsior is a kind of straw that they used for packing before we had these horrible popcorn packing materials. 
Excelsior became a kind of a, a watchword for Gene Shepherd. He'd write it as a, an insignia on uh, the books that he would inscribe and say, Excelsior, you fathead. Everybody's amazed. What is it? What is it? What is it? It's a leg. But what is it? Yeah, well, it, it, it's a, a leg, you know, like in a statue. Statue? Yeah, statue. I remember that it was just called a leg lamp. And I was puzzled because I'd never heard of a leg lamp. I never thought of putting those two things together. I went uh, down the hallway to where Bob and Jean had their office. And I said, leg lamp? What is that? Jean told me that uh, there was uh, a mention of this leg lamp in a 1976 uh, PBS uh, documentary that he'd been involved in, uh, which had a sequence uh, about this. And I wasn't ever able to find, they didn't provide the documentary and they, nobody could, could identify it for me. And this was in 1983 and it wasn't that available as a, you know, a video cassette or anything like that. So um, I just uh, did a sketch and they said, yeah, that's it, that's it, like that. <laughs> and of course they were lying through their teeth. They had no idea what it was, uh, but nor had any of us. That uh, lampshade was like a piece that existed in my mother's house from a different era, a different uh, kind of aesthetic, which was so out of place in the Parker residence, but uh, that's how, of course, it was intended. This was a lovely scene because not at least that Bob Clark himself took a little cameo. You go to the street and there's a group of guys standing looking at this performance in the window. And one of them is uh, Bob Clark or the character of Old Swede. There's Bob with a cap on, with a toque on. <laughs> Look at this. Don't bother me now, Swede. Can't see I'm busy. Yeah, but what is that? It's, it's, a, it's a major award. A major award? Shucks, I wouldn't have known, Dad. It looks like a lamp. Melinda Dillon just played this up to the max. Of course, the actors are absolutely in prime form here. The entire neighborhood was turned on. Oh, you should see what it looks like from out here. It could be seen up and down Cleveland Street, the symbol of the old man's victory. Yeah, he won that. It's a major award. Yeah. It's a kind of subversive movie, the very opposite of nostalgia, actually. But in the end, all these resentments that have been hinted at and illustrated by the subversive voiceover sort of get concluded and it all wraps up in a package that we really want to believe. And that seems to be... Uh, constant through the 35 or so years that the film has been out.